After the defeat at Gorgamela, Darius fled to the mountains, gathering what troops he could. Though keen to pursue him, Alexander first secured the key cities of central Persia. Babylon and the administrative capital Susa offered no resistance, and in so doing avoided any rough treatment from him. The Persian royal palace lay southeast of Susa at the ceremonial capital Persepolis, with mountainous terrain in between. Alexander's general, Parmenian, took the baggage train along an easier but longer northerly route, whilst Alexander took the shorter route through the mountains. In a high, narrow entrance, known as the Persian Gates, Alexander encountered a strong Persian force, commanded by the satrap, Ariobazanes. The Persians seemed to be in an unassailable position, but a local shepherd showed Alexander a hidden path, which enabled him to outflank and rout them. Defenceless now, Persepolis too surrendered, leaving the Macedonians free to loot its treasury and burn the palace down. Now Alexander was free to take up the pursuit of Darius once more. At camp one night, Alexander received word that Darius had been found bound in golden chains and close to death in a wagon beside the road. Unwilling to run any further, the Persian king had been stabbed and left for dead by his desperate generals. Alexander honoured the dead king, burying him with full ceremony and vowing vengeance on his killers. It seemed that all that remained for Alexander's victory to be complete was to subdue what little resistance remained in northeastern Persia. Once that was achieved and garrisons were established throughout the region, his men may have looked to enjoy the fruits of their labor as masters of the known world. Alexander's ambition seems to have found a new focus at this point, and the first seeds of dissent among his men were sown. Decreeing that his men should each take a Persian wife, he seemed intent on integrating the Greek and Persian cultures. He had Parmenian murdered after executing his son for supposed treachery, and in Bactria he killed Clytus during a drinking bout. The core of his army remained loyal though, even when in 326 BC his attention fixed upon India as his next conquest. In accepting the submission of the Indian city of Taxides, Alexander made an enemy of King Porus, who ruled the lands to the east. Porus gathered an army of perhaps 60,000 infantry, cavalry, chariots and elephants, and awaited the Macedonians on the far bank of the River Hydaspes. River Hydaspes, 326 BC. Having conquered the Persian Empire, Alexander persuades his battle-weary army to march to Egypt. His army now boasts Persian troops in the form of the Mardian archers and Scythian horse archers. is barred by the river Hydaspes, and King Porus guards the river with a huge army. Amongst the Indian army are large numbers of fearsome war elephants. Alexander knows that his army cannot possibly break through such a formidable defense. But several days ago, his scouts discovered another fording point several miles upstream. Alexander has a plan. He camps his main army in full view of King Paulus and spends the next four weeks ordering large amounts of troops up and down the river. As expected, Paulus follows their movements. Eventually, the Indians grow complacent and ignore the Macedonians. Alexander is now ready to lead a large force across the unguarded ford and take the fight to Porus. Hello there, Spartans, and welcome back 
to Total War Rome Remastered and it is what literally a couple of days to go before you guys can get your hands on this very exciting stuff. We've had an historical battle on the base game, the Siege of Sparta. We've had an historical battle on the Barbarian Invasion DLC with the Battle of Shalons. And so, as you can probably have guessed, we are here on the Alexander DLC with the Battle of Hydaspes against King Poas of India. This was without doubt his most toughest battle he ever faced and we are here on the edge of his empire. He never got beyond this point. He had to pull back, regroup and was going to start a new campaign later on but he fell ill, got a fever and unfortunately died before that ever happened. So this is the limits to what he got to. So I thought this was quite an apt battle to do with it being his most challenging and the fact we're facing off against a lot of elephants today. So this should be quite a good clash. I hope you guys enjoy it. So as the wonderful Brian Blessed has just said, we cannot cross these two points in the river. There's no way we can do it. Their defense is too strong. We'll get absolutely destroyed within minutes. So what we're going to do is utilize this river crossing over here. Bring our entire force over to there. Cross and meet them on this open ground here with the uh, tree line as our protection. Um, and as you can see, they have got some pretty pretty good units i mean full tier units there with these indian female archers uh gold chevrons gold armor gold weapons for the elephants as well i think the king poets the general has as well yeah they've all got it all three indian units of elephant units so you have all got top tier xp to them so this is going to be a challenge it's not going to be easy we haven't got as much experience because as you can imagine these are troops if alexander's had to bring in to the ranks as he's conquered more lands and he's lost some even more experienced units prior in previous battles so the the xp for us is only at bronze level right let us begin ladies and gentlemen and let's do this so we're going to bring our mardian archers onto the high ground here to attack these female archers there, the Indian female archers, because we can take them out quickly. That's one unit less to worry about who are top tier. So we'll bring them across there to deal with that. And then let's get the pikemen. Because these are key. The pikemen and the cavalry are key to this clash today. So group one for them. Skirmishers into group two. Now the thing is, the moment... And I mean, the moment we cross this river, these react. And they've got light cav, so they're going to be on us pretty quickly. And if they react, we've got to get into position and into formation very quickly. So the moment, say, we cross, we've got to be on it instantly. So we're going to get everyone into position now. And then once we've done that, we'll be okay, hopefully. So these are the Scythian archers, the mounted archers. We'll use them as to you know, kite and to harass the enemy, hopefully as much as possible. And that's basically where we are at, ladies and gentlemen. Are the archers firing? They are indeed. So these are units of, this was a 200 unit to begin with, I think, or 180. 180. No, maybe 200, I don't know. But they're dropping, which is good. Let us fast forward, as we'll be here for a long period of time. Okay. Get these two units of pikemen to come across. We've got, what, well, we've got some skirmishers here, high pass uh, We've got a few units of them, so they're quite good. We use them as the, uh, you know, the hybrid units that they are. And we've got the javelin men as well. And we've got companion cavalry. We've got some allied cavalry which will probably units that he's recruited into his ranks again as he's, as he's conquered uh, lands and provinces he's probably brought these into his army as he's come. So these are the allied cavalry he's got there and then the Scythian mounted archers over there. Right. Nearly there now these pike units are and then we'll get them over to the other side. Now how we do this for me Obviously, we use the river to protect that right flank. That is key. Just like it was at the Battle of Pharsalus for the Romans, how Caesar used that river 
to protect his left flank, I believe. We'll do the same again with Alexander and game to protect his right with that river there. But we're going to angle them about here, I'd say, about there, to receive the enemy. Because they'll try and flank around us here. So we can try and angle our units to the left a little bit to be able to manoeuvre it if needs be. The elephants will be um, less successful, hopefully, in encounter uh, flanking us, hopefully. So let's bring them across. Let's go. We've got to go now. Cav, begin. Now, as I say, they react instantly. Their cavalry, light cav, will instantly come across. So we're going to meet them with our cav. Archers can just go on the flank there. And then the skirmish units can just go right behind the pikemen. And hopefully, fingers crossed, this works. They haven't reacted yet. Just waiting, just waiting. No, they're going, they're going now, they're going now, they're moving. Well, let's go, 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 go. Bring our cavalry across. Oh, there's reinforcements coming. Oh, God, I forgot about them. Damn it. We've got to react to them as well in a second. They've got chariots, I think, and medium cav. Yeah, okay, fine. Well, they're going to be there over there. Let's get the archer units to begin to harass. Light cav. So, yeah, our, our heavy cav take out their light cav now. I think pretty much everyone's in position. Or getting into position. Right, we've got to take this out very, very, very quickly. They've got unit of javelin men behind them to support. That's it. Pull away. Do not get uh, pulled into that. Right, let's get the pikemen with the phalanx down. That would be horrendous if we didn't do that. Okay, they're getting into position now. They'll probably charge his head on, hopefully. That would be great if they do. All right, everyone's in position beautifully. Get them on to fire at will. Oh, they're going to charge his head on. This is great. This is what I want to see. Oh, yes. Oh, like water off the cliffside. Okay, great. That is great. That is really, really good because they have literally sacrificed themselves there, which is crazy. The Cav are in serious trouble. We'll just mop them up now. Pick out the general unit here. Come on. As I say, we've got to be very sparing. It's going to be very tempting to utilize Alexander as much as possible. He's, you know, top tier unit. He's full XP. And, you know, he's, he's there with 148 men in his in his ranks. So we, the, the idea to use him a lot is going to be very tempting. But if we do lose him as a unit... It's battle over, so we've got to be careful with how many, well, how much we actually do in the end use him in the clash, in the battle itself. Because, yeah, that's it. Once he's gone, that is game over. Okay, now I'm thinking here, they're going to just pull it there, there, like that. Just a little bit like that. We've got time before they come over. I have got too long because they are moving forward now in mass. Get the cavalry on the flanks. We don't want to put them out too far there because it will mean they'll probably pull a lot of their units across and will be trapped. We want them to ultimately be tempted to come to our pikemen over here. That's why we want them to attack, really. Looks like the full army's coming across. We'll bring our units of archers back across now. May as well. Okay. Okay. Now, what you could do is harass those chariots. Go, 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 go. What have you got coming? You've got javelin men. You've got Indian medium cav. Fine. At least that supporting army is being destroyed. And destroyed quickly. Before these guys got across here. Now look at them. They are starting to push left. And I'm thinking of these two units probably angered them a little bit like that maybe. But we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait, we'll wait. What are these guys? Spearmen. Get some shots off, get some shots off. Ready? 
pull back a bit. Oh, what's coming forward here? What's coming forward? We've got the bank still of the river there supporting us nicely. We are, we are in... No, we're not in guard mode. Get in guard mode. Slingers. We could go for a charge against them. But they are coming quickly to push on us. So, oh, God, they've got quite a lot of damage there. We're going to have to take it. We're going to have to stand strong here and take a lot of fire early on. Because in the end, I want to be aggressive with the, the pike units. But it's going to be at the right moment. We can't overcommit too soon. Okay, okay, okay. Come on, come on, come on. Get out of there quickly in a minute because they're going to turn tail. Pull out, pull out. Back, 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 back. Pike units are okay. One unit's taken a few damage from that initial charge by the reinforcing army, but they're okay. And the trees are, as I say, protecting them from that missile fire, I would imagine. So we're not too bad here. But look at them. They're taking all those army of elephants across on the left. So we're going to have to receive them a little more to that side. Because they are really, look at that, pushing on that left side. Yeah, I know, I know. Let's just move a little bit forward, start to put the pressure on them. A smidge. Is that cavalry unit on the right coming towards? It's not. Okay, move in. What are we doing? What are we doing? Oh, that's not going to work. Jesus, that's not going to work. That did not work as a, an order. A lot of units there causing us problems. That line's going to go like that. What are these pike units doing? Get into position, men. Right, they are starting to try and bait us with the... Well, we're trying to bait them, I think, with the elephants. God, they are quick. They are actually very quick. This could be suicide, but we'll see. Keep Alexander protected. Causing a lot of problems actually there with the calf. Ah, that's not gonna work. That's not gonna work. The elephants are a threat. They are erratic, but they are a threat at the end of the day. So let's pull back. We can't we can't face them. Let's pull around here. We can get to the enemy then, hopefully. Right, they are sitting tight. And we are not so. Let's. Oh, God, we've lost two units of companion cav there. That is awful. Damn, damn, damn. Enough of this. We're going to have to push on to their units. Oh, no. They are, they are beginning to commit. That one's come back as well, but they're over there. Should push them back pretty quickly. Yes, come on, hold the line. They're trying to sweep us round there. Run. 
Those archers should be taken out pretty quickly. Yeah, that's it. Just keep coming to us, towards our pikes. I will take that all day long. It's all about cohesion. All about discipline with these pike units. So we had a lucky escape with that calf before because that cavalry was in serious trouble with those elephants, I tell you. Serious trouble. But they've lived on. Our uh, Persian calf, Scythian calf, sorry. They can take out those female archers. Come on. Right, we've managed to pull the four units back together. Good. That is good. That is good. Right. Female archers are dispersing. Look at the balance of power now. We are um, okay. Considering they had nearly double the units that we had. That's not too bad. That's not too bad. A lot of these units are wavering, pulling back. Now they're going to begin. Oh, this is King Poas here. if I mention this at the beginning, a lot's happened since then. But yeah, in the actual battle, as I say, it was a, a difficult clash for Alexander. He did come through in the end. And the result of the, of the battle was that Poes was appointed as a kind of satrapy state for Alexander in the new provinces. So he wasn't killed. He was became kind of the subordinate for Alexander afterwards. Uh, but yeah, it was a mighty clash in the Indian jungles. Captured quite well in the film, I thought. I did like the in the, in the film itself, Alexander. I thought it was uh, well done, especially when you saw the elephants coming through the trees. Like, can you imagine seeing that as a sight, as a as a as a soldier in Alexander's army, thinking, "What the hell is this coming through the lands here? These great monsters." Uh, I remember when I heard a story once when the Romans first came across across the Carthaginian elephants of Africa, and it's like. You know what the what was this sight? It's never seen them in you know in their lives before, and then it's, you're confronted with this on the battlefield. It must have been terrifying for them, absolutely terrifying. Because you know, for us today, we know what an elephant looks like, we know what it is, but never saw it, never seen it in your entire life, and it's coming hurtling at you, and it's going to cause you a lot of damage. Really is quite terrifying, I could imagine. Take it for granted now, know, knowing what you know, you know what elephant looks like. But then it pretty bad. Anyway, enough of this because they're not committing. They are being. Oh, hey up! I was gonna say I thought they were being a little bit shy, but they're not really. No, it's okay. It's okay. We'll use the high pass bits to get them. They can deal with them. Get the line going for There's a couple of units in his spearmen there. Okay, fine. This is fine for me. If they want to start just doing this, I'm all happy because it means I can just pick them off little by little. These units here will fall apart. Then that means there's two yet two less, three less units to deal with as the battle goes on. They're just keeping their elephants back there for the moment. The general's one I want to get. If I can get if I can get Poas killed. Then this will be a big kick in the teeth for the Indians, I tell you. Okay, let's just again. Enemies are routing there. Let's let's start to move to, move out now, out of the out of the tree line, and then start trying to get the enemy to to commit forward. Are they routing? They are. So we'll bring the skirmishers behind a little bit further. See, no one's moving. If we have to make the move, then I'll take I'll take that. I'll make the bloody move. We'll push on them, and they'll have to commit then, because we'll just keep going forward with our pikes in formation, and they'll have to commit then. But they have got that range to them, but they will ultimately, in the end, run out of ammo soon, so they can't keep firing on, it, on us forever. Balance of power, still, as you can see, three quarters in their favor but we are pulling it back i think it was about here when it first started yeah does that green line indicate how far we've come in uh, progress towards it being in our favor i think that does actually 
I may be wrong, but... Okay, nice and cohesively, nice and disciplined. Let's begin... Pushing on him. I'm going to commit Alexander's forces in a minute. Hopefully they've, yeah, they've uh, they've gained a little bit of uh, stamina back. So we'll pull them forward. We've had a little bit of a rest. They are firing quite a lot of rounds against us here. They're not pulling back, Ali. Surely they're not pulling back. Right, so be it. We'll just continue. The numbers are quite good across the units of Python. We haven't lost too many. So we'll just keep going forward, little by little. Inch by inch. Just be careful of that left flank there. My pacifist can support. Get the pikes down. Get your pikes down. Get your pikes down. Thank you. What are they? Light cap. Not a problem. Really, when you think about it. Oh, they've utilised that gap that's formed. Damn it. Right, let's move. Let's move the line forward. Pick him off. Yes! High pass with support them. Our defense are dropping. Get that line there. Right, can we move? Move in. Christ. They will ultimately in the end go berserk if they're not careful. Oh, Pike, King Porsche is pushing through there. He's done a... Bloody wonderful charge there against us. Might support them now. Go, go, go. Oh, that's good. That's great. That's done a great job of uh, pushing them away. These two go for that unit over there. All right, now we get into the business end of this battle. Someone take the king down. Right, great. They are starting to panic quite considerably. Look at the balance of power now. It's nearly at 50%. Cavalry, go on. Go on, charges. Pike, get down. Yes. 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 Jarius are pushing on us. Right, Phalanx. Reform the line. Or the calf back. Okay, now I think the progress is starting to really kick in. The balance of power is lovely in our favour for the first time in the clash. What do we got here? Spearman, I know it's crazy. Don't do not do this at home, guys. But uh, we're going to charge him. Because uh, I think we could. We could. We could pretty much finish him off quite quickly. I know it's crazy. Yeah, look at that route. I thought that would, when that mass charge kicked in, everyone uh, then pushing forward. He's got he's to make the difference. Push on against his chariots. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Elephant unit there. Okay. As you would imagine, the elephants are pretty much the only ones left in the room. Not like the pun. The elephant in the room is the elephant, so let's go. A uh, couple of the lower end number of units left. Go and just make sure they rout and fully retreat from the field while we now deal with this remaining unit of elephants. Okay, that's it. That's it. Push, push, push. 
General's back. Yeah, they're fleeing the field now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. This is it. There you go. This is it. Oh, look at the falling life flies. Yes, we've done it. We have done it, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, we got it. Alexander is victorious. And we've won the day. Let's mop up the remaining uh, forces before we finish off the fight. But that was good. As you can see, the, the pike men were key. And the fact we can utilise the cav as, as well as we did to get... Obviously, at the beginning, we lost a few more units that I would like to have done with these two um, ones there, those allied cav and mounted archers. I would have liked to have kept them a bit more intact, but they did do a lot of damage with the skirmishers and were to hit the chariots when needed. So it was pretty good in the end. And uh, the pikemen were wonderful against those uh, elephants. Absolutely wonderful. I don't think I can quit the battle because if I quit the battle, it makes it that I lose. I think I may be wrong, but I'm just dreading doing that because I don't want. I don't want to. Hopefully, we will get a heroic victory on this one. Big, ba it's a big battle mark. This is actually it goes all the way around here. It's a big map. So, is that it? Is that everyone done? Oh, they're just there in the corner. Oh, yeah, we got... Oh, look at that! Look at that! Blessed victory! I like, the, I like the pun there. Heroic victory as well. Great stuff. So we lost, what, over about 400 units in the end? Probably a lot of those with the Cav. Uh, casualties inflicted. Oh, look at that! City and Mounted Archers, 430. And 385 for the Pikes. Alexander 374. So that was damn good. How many? Did he, I want to see what the elephants caused. 146 and 111. 114, sorry. Okay. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. That is the victory confirmed, just like it was back in 326 BC. So now we've covered all three games with some historical battles. I will be back, however, with a fourth on the original game once again because I asked you guys to remember on the Siege of Sparta video about which one we want to fight and I think it's going to be Teutonburg Forest but I can't be for definite. It probably will be though. So I'll be back with that at some point in the next few days. So do keep your eyes peeled for that. But I hope you enjoyed this one. It was a nice clash to uh, to see and to fight and those uh, Alexander's pikemen were wonderful in the end. So yes, great stuff. Thank you, as always, for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, you know what to do. Drop the video a like to show your support, help with its performance. And until next time, take care. Farewell.